Delighted now to be joined by uh, George Stevens. George, welcome. Pleasure to be here. Nice to see you. Thank you. Now, you had the uh, plenary session this uh, morning. Went very well from what I hear. Well, thank you. I thought I had some good conversations following, so I enjoyed it. So what were some of the main messages you were talking about? I think one thing that's really been consuming my attention for probably the last uh, five years or so is trying to get at what's left for us as people in a world of very heavy technology right. use. And so and what I mean by that is we're using technologies as an active partner in our thinking rather than the way we might have used it say a decade ago right. where we would say we would pick a technology to do a task. And now with Google, with any of the social media platforms, like we think with our technology. So that was one focus was this idea of what changes with a very heavy technology guided world and then in particular, how does that change in some things like our learning and uh, related opportunities? And by that, I mean, if you're going to go out and uh, say work in a labor market, all of a sudden something gets automated in your job now, your position is obsolete. How do you reskill as fast as possible to get back into the labor market? So kind of what were the takeaways would be for, for this audience? I think a lot of professional societies, and uh, you know, it could be you know medicine or nursing or engineering or you know the law field, is really getting asking important questions for themselves. Like, what is it that we do as professionals that adds real value that technology can't do? And so, I think a big takeaway is understanding what are those attributes, and then asking the bigger question: Are those attributes prominently featured in your curriculum? Are they prominently featured in your university programs? So the big question is, what are they then, these attributes that we have that uh, machines, technology maybe doesn't? You know, that, that's, there's a lot of people trying to figure that out. There's, yeah. you know, from cognitive scientists to neuroscientists to computer scientists to learning scientists. And uh, so I think it, it varies, depends who you talk to. But I think we generally seem to agree this statement that I mentioned in a keynote from a faculty member at MIT who tried to raise a, you know, his child and a robot sort of from the same point to see what's unique as they develop. And he used a term that came from Helen Keller, actually, which is that that experience of learning as a human is quivering with life. It's embodied, it's passionate, it's involved, whereas with a lot of technology, it's more regurgitated and more just duplicating what, uh, what we've already done, but doing it better and faster. So uh, I think for a lot of us, we like to think there's something unique about that human experience. And I think a lot of them, I'm calling them being skills, but it's things like compassion and working right. well with others, connecting and collaborating, being creative, brainstorming. Now, I'm not saying that technology will never duplicate those, right. but at least in the foreseeable future, the ability to create and to be, so to speak, are fairly unique human skills. And, a lot of organizations have said that this is the future of work. You know, from the World Economic Forum to OECD to right. a huge number of these consulting firm reports, they emphasize that resilience and compassion and engagement and kindness, and these are attributes that are most in demand today. Well, thanks very much indeed for joining us. Pleasure. Really appreciate Good to it. chat. Thanks, George. Thanks.